Well, hello. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Welcome to House Seats Presents. Woo! A lively group here today. Wow. I know, right now. Did you love that? I did. It's nice. Even when we have only a couple people in here, it feels like there's like 40 people in here. Wow, I love this it. This is so exciting. We're, 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 I was going to say this not in a, in a bad way, we're, we're surrounded by nostalgia, and that doesn't mean anyone in the room. <laughs> is womp, 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 womp. Um, and I'm staring at your website right now, too, my dear. Uh, and I want to just point out something really fast. It says, okay. one of your favorite movie scenes when you were a kid, I'm just seeing this now, and it's, it's, uh, it's uh, Donald Duck or Daffy Duck. Oh, yes. Yeah. And he's playing and the, the two pianos. pianos. Oh, yeah. I oh, love this. So we have Sarah Hester Ross here today. Woo-hoo! Uh, she and I are going to uh, talk about some of the things she does here in Vegas, but more importantly, we're going to talk about how she got involved with our set list this last week and yes. the 4th of July. And Indeed. then we also have my uncle Tom. I love, see, I have family. family. You know, cousin Rachel was on uh, a little while ago, too. No. So I love having my family on here. So there you go. Hi, Uncle Tom. Hello. Uncle Tom plays a very important role in our prop area today, too. If you'll take a look at what we have around here. First of all, we have some uh, some jumpsuits, clearly ones that say jump. And we're going to get to what these all mean. Oh, get mm-hmm. it. It's a jumpsuit. <laughs> See? Tick, tick, I tried tick, tick, to get Brandon tick, tick, tick. Nix wow. to wear this during his uh, jump number. Why wouldn't he? Well, it was it, there was, it was craziness between both shows uh, backstage. Oh, true. So. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Oh, there we go. And then we have a Van Halen 1984 jumpsuit. And then we have a platinum record back here from 1984. Indeed. That is made out to you. Yes, it Tom is. Tom Shelton. So we are going to talk Tom. Uncle Tom. He's your uncle, real uncle. Uncle Tom. Isn't the, what's that Indeed. music with Uncle Tom's Cabin? Yeah. Uncle Tom. Key and I. It's a little uncle racy. Tom. Well, yeah. Uncle Tom's Cabin. Tom. Let's have some rum. <laughs> Whatever you have, start with what you're drinking. Mm-hmm. Mm. So... Usually when we do the show, we do sort of a, a weekend recap and then go right into the show. And our weekend recap really is the 4th of July and what everybody, I want to find out what everybody did for the 4th of July. Were there any illegal fireworks in your neighborhood? Did you cause any fires, anything like that? I did not. My neighborhood was filled with uh-huh. illegal things though. Yes. Oh, just. Just fireworks? Crazy. <laughs> yes. Wow. Just fireworks. <laughs> That's no it. police called. No, no problems. No, no fires. No, we're okay. we're a nice little neighborhood, okay. you know, and things happen. Where we do just, you live? Where are you at? What's your neighborhood? Out in bum f Egypt. Okay. Centennial. Okay. It's way Ooh. out there. Yeah, that is far. No, no HOAs. But I like though. it. Very far. Yeah. No, we H- have H- yeah. and they let you do the fireworks on that. Well, mm, okay. let uh-huh. and get away gotcha. with. This. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I know because we grew up, and Tom Tom can attest this. We grew up. You know, in the same neighborhood, basically. My parents still live in the same house that I grew up in. And, uh, they, you know, we let off fireworks, you know, in the middle of the cul-de-sac out in the desert. And they still do. And they still caused a few fires back in the day. And, but, they, and still they still do. do. In fact, we, we caused a fire last year. <laughs> I know. We did a fire. We caused a fire last year. And only noticed it. Uh, I know. Only noticed it. <laughs> Uh, oh, the police only came like three times before the actual <laughs> oh, fire actually Only happened. three times? And we, we were swearing oh, well, it wasn't us with okay. the aerials, you know. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm putting myself out there on this. And uh, right, it wasn't me. I didn't light it. Oh, Anyways, so. I was just a participant. Your hands are I, clean. I, my hands are clean. I didn't touch one thing. I touched, a, touch I touched a water balloon the whole time. I didn't do anything else. <laughs> and uh, and we, we didn't notice until the palm tree was on fire behind the house. I and someone tried to it? jump on the the roof to put it out before the fire department gets there. <laughs> I ran into the house and closed the door and I turned the lights off and told everybody to be quiet. It burned a really long time. It did. <laughs> now, what would happen if the like you guys would have gotten in trouble if the fire department did come and there was a fire? They came. I feel like you'd get more in trouble if the fire department came and was like, "Where's the fire?" Oh, never mind. It's fine. Yeah, we were like, all good. I, I don't remember exactly what happened. I kind of stayed away, but you know, no fires this year. So <laughs> it was good. it was yeah. pretty contained good. to one palm tree. Yeah, just one palm. And we, we saw the palm tree this year because we are the same house. And we're like, oh, look at that palm tree still burnt from last year. <laughs> and the people that live there weren't. I'm so. These people are watching right now. Uh, they weren't even home. So we were putting out their fire without them even knowing. Oh, so it wasn't your palm so they, tree? So they probably drove home at, after the 4th of July from a nice weekend, family weekend. And we're like, what happened to our palm tree? Well, wow. as, wow. as some of That's you may not funny. know, but Bryce is an Eagle Scout. <gasps> I know how to start fires. And, <laughs> and that was his good deed daily. That wow. Was, was it starting a fire? No, putting and, oh, it out. Oh, putting it out. Did you putting get a out. badge? Thank you. Uh, I got he a, did it start the fire. The singing merit badge. The <laughs> cooking merit badge. None of those really outdoorsy ones. No. Anyway. But 
as we look at all these and we reminisce over a lot of these, I have to tell you, he brought these in. These are the Frisbees, the foam Frisbees. Yes. So cool. He gave these to me. I remember getting these when I was like five or six years old. Because Tom worked for Uncle Tom. I can't call him by his name. It's like a teacher is never their first I know. name. Like Aunt Pam. I called her Aunt Pam. Pam. She's like, I'm Aunt Pammy to you. So, so do I, I cannot <laughs> call them by their real names. Uh, so when you worked for Van Halen, you worked for them as the assistant merchandising director. Right. From 1980. We'll get the technical parts. 1980 to 1985. Correct. Yes. And I, in those years, I received many at Christmas, which I don't have now. I was so bummed. I'm like, why didn't I save... Dumb the Van kid. Halen merchandise, because as he explained to me before the show even started about sort of the history of their merchandising, I'm going to let him kind of talk a little bit about that. They were pioneers in a lot of ways with how they marketed, copyrighted, and did their merchandise. Wow. Yes. We had, we, yeah, go ahead. We had, a, we had a very brilliant band manager mm-hmm. who saw that the real money was going to be in merchandising. Oh, yeah. And so he, the first thing he sought was copyright protection. And a decision in the uh, Third Circuit, I believe, out of New Orleans, yeah. anything that has your name on it is yours. And if they haven't sought your permission, you can seize it. So we mm-hmm. traveled the United <laughs> States with a box full of seizure writs and had warehouses full of bootleg T-shirts. Nice. Yeah. Did you give me some of those bootleg T-shirts? Or Absolutely. Okay. The good Absolutely. ones. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, some of the bootlegs were excellent. <laughs> some had a little blood on it. Right? Hey. Hey. <laughs> some rock and roll. Tours, it's right? rock right, and roll. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. No, I, and, and, you know, you have amazing stories, some of which you probably can and cannot share over the years. but uh, Not all of the details, the... no. But I will you tell like, you. Like, under legal, like, you're not allowed, shh, or, like. They're still friends. Mob. <laughs> What, 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 some, what some, 80s, some, right? sometimes yeah, it's best just to keep your own counsel. Right, right, right. You're right. such a wise man. Well, I will tell you, we put on a hell of a show on Sunday night, the 3rd of July Woo! at the Yahoo! Brooklyn Bowl. Yahoo. We did uh, a Van Halen and 1984 uh, sort of rock off of sorts. We had the album set to cover to cover of uh, VH1, mm-hmm. and we had um, cover to cover 1984. And, oh, and there's the crew back There's the crew. Okay, so you'll recognize some of our past guests on here. <laughs> April Laparty and Paul, Paul Johnson, Brandon Nix, and Mark Chinook. Mark is crazy. You know Mark? I was, Monday's Dark, I Mark? Did, Yes, I yeah. know Mark. I love Mark. And, Jason and, and these, yeah. these leggings are fantastic. Rachel, I was yeah. really looking for it. I was told there would be assless chaps. Oh. And I was really I looking Brandon forward cl- to I it. Think April came close to wearing them, and honestly, yeah, I mean, yeah, hot for teacher, right honestly, there, Brandon Nix on April the party. I was kind of upset because yeah. if I were, I, I wasn't told that taking off our clothes was allowed. Yeah. I would have totally done that. Way to go! And my team <laughs> would have won. Their team won because of boobies. Let's be honest. Well, Hot this is true. Teacher. The theatrics <laughs> right? of the theatrics of uh, 1984. I'm just saying. We were saying. talking prior on the phone. You know, he was partial to VH1 because you guys rocked it out in a different kind of rock way. That yeah, well, very pure, very, very true yep. to the music. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing that the album. That's the difference between the albums and in, in in the first place. The first yeah. album, VH1, is very creative and you know existential as far as rock was happening at that point. And then their second, there's a lot of hits off the second album, but it's a lot of filler, a lot of, you know, just like, it's not, I, I I prefer VH1 over in real life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not just because it's my team, but (laughs) in real life, I think it's a better album. Well, as you kind of hear over right now, I had to look up his name because I didn't remember his last name. Mike Zutzer. Zuter. Yeah. Mike Zuter was our guitar player. And he was great. That is, I think, I think I looked over my Uncle Tom. We were in the bowling lanes, and my Uncle Tom, I believe there were buildup going on up here sure. because it, sure. he, I, I think he it. leaned at one point and said, Eddie would be super proud. Oh, he wow. He absolutely would. Yeah. You know, you can, you can um, kind of cover stuff, but he played it. Yeah. Note by exactly. note, bend by bend. Tear by tear, and it yeah. was just engaging, encompassing, and terrific. Nobody, no. <laughs> See, and we, we cry a lot on the show. It's okay. Let's drink. Let's, <laughs> Let's have drink. a sip for the <laughs> <laughs> oh, homage to the 80s and to Van Halen. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers to Van Halen. Mm. Mm. It's so smooth. Thank you, Scott. That's very nice. Um, 
no, and and I think everyone was silent and stopped. I think everybody Snapchatted and took their videos right mm-hmm. there of when he when he started at the beginning of that song, and you're just like. What am I witnessing right now? Right. And as much as I got a lot of merchandise as a kid, I didn't really know a lot of Van Halen songs. I knew them, but it inherently, I never really listened to them. Right. I got sucked into the sort of the jazz era and my whole thing. You know, Ooh, I was jazz? Listening, I was listening to like <laughs> Harry Connick Jr. and Natalie Cole's Unforgettable album while cleaning the house on Saturday mornings. Nice. So I wasn't really, Ma- Megan, my sister, was in the other room listening to like, you know, I was introduced to like Tori Amos and to, you know, oh. Alanis Morissette and people like, which we talked about. Tori Amos. Tori, uh, see, I want to do a set list of Tori Amos, but uh, Andy's not sure people will come to hear, you know. I, I understand China. that. I, I understand. You from a piano aspect. I would. I think I have found our pianist for this. Yeah. I would done. totally do done. it. Oh, okay, I perfect. love Tori precious Amos. little things I can hear. You and she's a redhead. I mean, not and, she, and that. She's redhead. Oh, I got gooseies. <gasps> oh, yeah. it's happening. Oh, I have oh. sleeves as, yeah. <laughs> as a precaution. <laughs> yeah, right. No one's gonna be. No, don't let anyone in the bathroom with a razor blade. Um, that just got dark. <laughs> no, it did. Sorry, it's Thursday. <laughs> it's Thursday. It's Thursday. First day of the weekend. It is. We're on, we're on our way. Can't so. Wait. When you so this is your first set list show with us, yes. As we're already mm-hmm. getting ahead of ourselves and picking you for other ones, we do that a lot. When Brandon Nix is in here, we actually like. I think Brandon gets roped into every. It's like Brandon, you're going to do this song. Brandon, this is him at rehearsal. In fact, that was my Instagram post. I'm like, of course, I chose Brandon in the moment that I was there doing. Uh, I think he was doing Hoffer Teacher there. That's Vincent Verderame behind us, our music director, and, and he's and so drummer. good, very strong. He is very strong. Such a great. He drummer. works with Blue Man Group. Uh, full time, and then he actually wrote the theme song music to this show, the little d- some ditty we were dancing to prior to the. That's show. a great yeah. picture, of Brandon. Oh yeah, he Look could either that. be taking a dump ah. or singing right now. Yeah, but he's good. We but he, again, we rope him into a lot of shows, and so I think you know one of the reasons as we my, you know Uncle Tom was asking me oh, about Lord. yeah. See there you go. I'm yeah. sucking in. Can you tell? You rock. I look so skinny. Oh my gosh. Woo, skinny. Uh, MTV it. shirt too, baby. You should, right? It's a you, great shirt. You know, you might have worn this black jumpsuit. It has a full length zipper. Right? Oh. Uh. <laughs> We're getting There's nudity on We're this show. We're very later practical on today. now. I think we got pretty close to I naked like with it. April when she was on here. So it's okay. Nudity's fine. No, I. Nudity's fine. Oh, okay, see, Scott. It's <laughs> okay when you have a body like April, but when you eat two donuts just for the hell of it. Okay. Before you got here, it's not. Where, that kind oh, of you didn't bring them with you. I'm so hungry. Sorry. Um, no. So we, when we brought you into the show, and 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 Tom was asking me before. Uncle Tom was asking me before. He's, this is his first set list coming to. I said, he said, how did this come about? What are these shows about? And and as we start looking forward to our calendar for next year and the shows that we're doing, you know, we just finished up Amy Winehouse. We did that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're we're seeming to bring these shows back. Uh, House of Blues reprises them a lot. So we may be reprising Van Halen again at House of Blues. Very cool. Because yeah. they they seem to watch it and then want to bring it to their venue as well. Right. Um, but we're, we're slated to do a uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show in October. Ugh. I would love to volunteer for okay. that show just in general because i've always wanted to do it i i I, uh used to work at universal studios Uh and they would do it every year um but i wasn't i I don't know why i just never auditioned for it yeah and but i've always wanted to do the show it's It's such a fun thing it was a staple here for a short time we had a movie theater back in the day the tory pine cinema over there on before that the red rock cinema on charleston Uh, used to do it, but then the Tory Pine Cinema, which I think is now a Goodwill on Tory Pines and Sahara. <laughs> yeah, right. You know. it, you, they used to do midnight uh, showings once a month, of, and they did a Red Rock, R- Rocky Horror Toast. Picture Show. And you, once right, a yeah. month? Once a month they did it. Yeah. Oh, God. But now, Love so it. we're going to do it. I think the last one they did here, they did when Wicked's cast came through at Smith Center. Mm-hmm. They did a Broadway uh, a Broadway Cares Golden Rainbow charity event okay. at the uh, Tommy Wynn Theater. And we went, and it was awesome. And so... So Andy, Andy Wright in the office, he's been wanting to do it for a while. So we're going to look at October. That's a great that idea, especially in October. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can't go wrong. I volunteer to be the time warp. <laughs> okay. <yourself. laughs> You'll nail it. Yeah. Thank I you. Really Thank you. you. I, I really see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I really see it. Oh, yeah. You're giving me everything right, right, now. right now. Right now. Right <laughs> now. Uncle Tom, who moved here with my fam- my mom in the ni- in the late fifties, yes, with my with my grandfather, Grandpa Shelton, yes, who left beautiful Cardiff by the sea to come to <laughs> July Vegas right now. Yeah, uh, I know God. with Swamp Coolers. With I know you didn't even yeah they started. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Many yeah, Can you ahead. just repeat what you just said? Swamp Coolers. Oh. <laughs> 
I know, thought he said swamp cooters. <laughs> I'm like... They're the same. They're largely interchangeable. Oh, largely. dear goodness. I'm sorry. I, that's why I wanted you to repeat Johnson's it. Johnson's baby powder. <laughs> right? Everyone. Dry a shampoo for works for, for more than powder. just hair, people. <laughs> Watch the use of talc. <laughs> it has been known to cause problems. Um, anyway. they, they moved here, you know, and my grandfather was an entrepreneur. Go figure. That's he where he got the, the bite from that. Um and funny enough, he didn't start shows, but he did have a he did have a motel in two in, two motels two and Shelton Battery at the time as well, which still is still here, still here, not ours, but still the name. His good friend Carl Watson, they dealt uh, yep. craps together at the yep. Boulder mm-hmm. Club, mm-hmm. Oh. which yeah. has since been absorbed by uh, Binion's. Yep. Yeah, and then uh, Carl wanted to get out of that, and my dad wanted to get it. He moved back to Hollywood. Yeah. And so he sold the battery company to Carl, and we get to see each yeah. other every couple times a year. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah. I do. I, I'm new to this city. Um, about it's got a lot of history. Almost two years, yeah. but I love hearing about the history of it. Yeah. <clears throat> I just think it's it's fascinating. I'm really i I kind of like that like old like 40s mob mm-hmm. history stuff, and I know that that's really huge in this town, like the history of. But. Well, when we talk about. I mean, in the last few shows, we've been talking to a lot of performers who, you know, there's a place for big production shows like Cirque and the major shows, but there's a there's sort of a comeback of these smaller shows and like the Matt Goss. If you've seen the Matt Goss and the Gossy Show, I haven't, Caesars. but I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, any of those shows, even when Rock of Ages moved from Venetian <laughs> over to the Rio, they're moving to a they moved into a smaller, more intimate venue. It it creates that more of of a connection with the audience. Even Definitely. Blue Man Group, actually, they moved back to the Luxor in a different room, but it's about 500, 600 seats, so it's a more intimate show. Mm-hmm. People are going back to that, you know, connecting with the audience in a bigger way. And, uh, and and that's kind of what the set list and kind of what the shows we do. And kind of the show that you're doing right now, too. Oh, we're yeah. Getting, we're rounding you're it in up. a show? Oh, She's in Spoofical. Connection. I had to say her. <laughs> Spoofical the musical. The musical, yeah. Over at the David Sachs Theater. Woo! Yeah, yeah. And every night but Sunday. Uh, and according to Donald Trump, it is your... <laughs> right, anything you start with that sense. Absolutely the greatest ever. It is. Donald Trump he said really, about that. He really preferred me in the show he when did. he saw me. Yeah, yes, he yeah. was like, I like you. I mean, you're a woman. It's because you're a redhead. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you say? It's you yeah. It's because she uses Johnson like, baby powder. Is that a powder. fat joke? <laughs> Donald Trump, mm-hmm. asshole. I know. Um... Yeah, no, it's great. It's going so good. Yeah. The thing about this show is that it's a godsend for me. Yeah. Um, I've been here for two years, and I have auditioned out the, the dairy swamp cooter. The yeah. swamp cooter. The swamp cooter. I have. I have, I have auditioned. <laughs> so they cool you in, like the, in, the, in the audition the line. Phrase. It is. Hashtag, Hashtag swamp, swamp cooter. cooter. Yeah, turn on those swamp yeah. cooters. Anyway, but I really have, and um, <laughs> I just really haven't hadn't found a place that yeah. I fit. And I know that this is, it's, it's silly, but I'm more of a comedian than a showgirl. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. And I like sandwiches I and you. bread. Yeah. <laughs> so not eating is not an option for me. <laughs> so I, uh, but I auditioned yeah. for the show and it's just, it's so much fun. And I'm yeah. even kind of getting an opportunity because it's from the beginning. So yeah. we're creating as a team, like it's S- very SNL sketch comedy yeah. based yeah. and it's so fun. It's so fun. It's still in the baby yeah. uh, stages. So um, we're, we're working on making it as funny as possible, Yeah, but um, it's a great cast. Everybody is so fun and funny and creative and, and um, it's just, we're going back into rehearsals this week. Okay. Um, because we're grand opening on the 28th. Oh, nice. Yes. We'll be there. Very, of July? We'll be there. Yes, of yeah. July. Nice, nice. Okay. Very exciting. Yeah. And uh, we're adding new skits to it. Okay. I wrote a couple jokes. It's Ooh. fun. So. Are these the first jokes you've ever written? <laughs> <laughs> you might think that because they're not. You're going to hear they're swamp not very good in the show, so. probably. It's uh, okay. The things happen hashtag. organically. Actually, actually, no. I've been I've been writing um, parodies for musical parodies for about three years. Yeah. Ever since I've been do, doing dueling pianos. Yeah. So tell us about this. So you've been do, so dueling pianos here in Vegas. Uh, yes, yeah. and anywhere that will pay me. Gotcha. Yes, and just about anywhere. So there you are. Hi. There. Is that money or are those business cards? Those are basically request songs. Yes, the request. Basically, how the gig that. works is yeah. that it's an all request show, sure. and somebody can give a request 
And if it doesn't have money, it is called a suggestion. <laughs> and I like to wipe my ass with those. Um, They're useful for other things mm, right. as well. You know. <laughs> Damn anything. that journey song. <laughs> yes, yes. But ever so often, generosity comes along and yeah. people put cash with it. And that's how I make my money. And it's nice. it's very fun. It, it, gives, it gives the um, audience a sense of authority in the show. The more they pay, they run the show. Right. It's their song. They're in control. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's it's very fun, very improv comedy. Um, uh, call people up for birthdays and bachelorettes, and yeah. you know, basically, I'm a I'm a babysitter of drunk people. Yeah, but they I need still help. Get, you know, I know, <laughs> I know. I get. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, but and I get I get to drink along with them and yeah. just you know. I'm a I'm a clown who makes money. It's awesome. But you don't have to wear a red nose. No. Sometimes, Sometimes I'd like to cover so, up my Coke addiction. Oh, I'm just sorry. God. I'm just kidding. No, that's the Johnson's baby powder. Let's yes. be clear. That's okay. Talc. It Blame goes it the, everywhere. Blame it on the talc. It goes everywhere. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So have you have you done it at the um, the bar at, at New York, New York? I have. Yeah. Yes, I've only worked twice. Okay. It's kind mm. of a sausage fest. Uh huh. It's a boys' club. <laughs> uh, uh, there there are really only. A, what are their most requested songs? That's right. March um, of the Sausage. It's a, it's a German song. The most requested song is either Don't Stop, Stop Believing or Piano Man. Yeah, I knew you were going to say, Don't Stop Believing. I just can't take that song. It's. And what did you say? Beth, what did you say at the show? You said something along the lines of who wasn't allowed backstage at Van Halen concerts were Journey, Journey. fans. <laughs> Journey, Journey or Journey fans, Journey fans were not allowed or Journey or Journey fans. That's funny. Thank oh, you very absolutely. much for I that. mean, I don't <laughs> hate the song. It makes me a lot of money. Yep. There you so, go. Oh, and now thank you, Scott, oh, yes. for playing that. Um, well, no, it's mostly because it's it's that, why I don't like it, it's that drunk guy crowd oh, singing song that drives me. Yeah, Piano Man I love because I just love Billy Joel. But and it no. tells the story of what he's oh, what you're God. doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, Billy Joel, it was originally a, a piano club guy, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's how he started. Yeah. And, his songs are so beautiful and passionate, yeah. and they're fun to play too. And everybody knows the words. Right. The the thing about dueling pianos, it's 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 not just a show; it's very interactive. Yeah. That what that's what keeps people in the bar. That's right, what keep right, them drinking. Right. At, at the end of the day, all entertainers are we're alcohol salesmen. Right. That's what we do. So the bar is happy when we're selling drinks and right. we're doing you know toasts like yeah, yeah, yeah. to boobies because you can't motorboat a personality. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I mean, these are the these are the shtick. It's the gig. These are the jokes, people. Mm -hmm. so. In veritas truth. I <laughs> know. Yes. So I'm not going to come why in. It's and funny because it's yeah, true. Right. So I, I would clear a room if I asked you to play China from Tori Amos in the middle of a, a bunch Unfortunately, of guys. Unfortunately, you would. I would get really excited. Oh, yeah. And if if there was a twenty yeah. or or more, I right. would I would do it yeah, because. Right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna haunt you. But even at the time. end of the day, yeah. at at that point, yeah, you give me a twenty dollar bill to play. Wrecking ball. Yeah. Someone in the room's gonna hate oh, yeah, it. Yeah. And they're gonna pay twenty one dollars to stop, stop it. Stop you from singing it. Ooh. Good. And well, mama makes I, money. Oh, okay. Either way. Ooh. So So I'm gonna just go and be like the little heckler in the group oh, to just I write like the it. songs that no one ever wants to hear <laughs> just so you make more money. It's perfect. Oh What's God. the least requested song? I'm gonna song? cry in the show. Least requested the, song? Yeah. I mean <laughs> really anything by Tori Amos. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. So uh -huh. Oh, but her mm. voice is so pretty. <laughs> I'm going to have a moment. Now it's time for See, the I razor can't, I blades. I, I can't take it. That's... I can't take it. I'll start crying in the show. And that's not because of my hernia. <laughs> um, Yo I know. I, yes. Okay. So take us on a journey now. I, uh, wrong choice of words. Everyone Boo, has, everyone journey. Has a drink for, everyone has a drink Boo. for now. No brown M&Ms. No brown <laughs> M&Ms. Yeah, there Fanny really was. Started and the writer. No, she true. knows. I it's do. True. I, get out of here. I have a rock star boyfriend, so yeah. he tells me all the stories. And it's true. I know things. It is. It's, it's very true. true. And it's. So they hire one person to go and pull all the brown M&Ms. It's, it's true. Out of the Van Halen M&Ms bowl. There's a re there was a reason for that. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. You know, yep. any smart kid now would just go to the m and store and just buy color by color by color. <laughs> It wasn't uh, right. Exactly. It wasn't available. God. That option wasn't he available back at then. That time. Yeah. Yeah.
So what was the reason? Because our producer, Scott, just came through here. But Make he sure didn't. people were paying attention and everybody got their limo. Gotcha. Yeah. It's actually quite brilliant. Like it they is. have to every to Well, today's to the stars are just detail. being dicks about it. Yeah. Wow. I don't do the yellow peanut M&Ms, but I want the rest of them. It's just because. It, the food coloring cool. has animal stem cells in it. Right. And I'm a vegan. I'm vegan and I'm gluten intolerant, but please bring the rolls. Copycat. <laughs> exactly. Copycat. Mm-hmm. Right. Can you tell us a story? I know you, you brought this up at the show the other night. Can you I tell do. us a story about Van Halen that we can share on air? I mean, you can share anything sure. on air, but whether you can sure you yourself can share. Sure. So the biggest the biggest event we ever did was called the Us Festival. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty thousand people. Yeah, I can't imagine. I can't when you imagine. walked out on stage, you actually had to like swivel your head to see them all. Mm-hmm. You, it, unfathomable. Yeah. And we were the last act of the night. We followed Scorpions. Oh wow! Okay. Who were stunningly good. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just saw their show over here a mm-hmm. couple of weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Stunningly. They're still good. great. Yeah. Still yeah. great. So our uh, backstage area was about a half a mile from the stage. Mm-hmm. And, we, <laughs> and we had AstroTurf and cabanas and everything else. Because yeah. it was real hot in San Bernardino, real hot. So we're getting ready to go to the show, and they decided it would be cool if each of the four band members rode separately in their own limo. <laughs> so I was sitting next to Eddie at one of the what? refreshment areas. Mm-hmm. You know, natural juices only. And he said, Tom, ride with me. I said, yeah, all right, sure. And so we get in the limo and I said to him, I said, yo, Eddie, is there anything to drink in here? Mm -hmm. Right? Because it was hot. It it really was. It was like 98 or something after the sun goes down, like it is here. And he says, yeah, there's supposed to be a bottle of that kind of champagne you guys like. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Dom Perry owner Crystal. Those were, you know, yeah. in case one or the other wasn't available. And I said, well, do you want some? He said, no, I don't like it, but you have some. So I, I opened the bottle and we each had a glass and he downed his quickly. He says, that's not why I want you here. I have an important question to ask you. Okay. He said, my brother and I are about to ride from backstage to this venue and we're going to work for a couple hours, right? And my dad, who you know is a classical oboist and plays in the L.A. Orchestra, and he, him and my mom gave us everything. I said, yeah, I met him. He said, well, we're going to make more money in the next two hours they ever did in their whole life. What do you think? And I turned to him and I said, gee, Eddie, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> And, Sounds good to me. And yeah. he look and he thinks at, about it for a minute, like it was my response was frivolous. And then he goes, "Damn right, pretty cool. Let's have another glass of that <laughs> stuff." I love it. Yeah, they 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 actually were a pretty close family. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. That's in your really time, cool. in your time working with them, one of the things that we we end up talking about, and I'm going to ask you this question. You know, we always believe in the power of the universe and the and the and the law of attraction and things like that. Do you think when the guys started and how early they started before you met them, that even before they broke up, that the synergy they had created what what they put out there? I mean, did they see themselves on that stage of two hundred fifty thousand people once? Did Dave they, certainly did. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. In fact, yeah. you know, did they turn people away? I was expecting more. Right. <laughs> he he always started the show and where's I always, the satellite feed? And the I always loved it. Yeah. Look at all the people here tonight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they ended their show a cappella with a wonderful arrangement of happy trails to you with the Shaps. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like he was- I was going to ask Andy to do when he told me that he told me that right before the top of show uh, set list. And he said, that's what they did at the end of the show. We happy trails. So, but I don't know if anyone, do everyone in the group knew happy trails. Although you learn uh, things pretty fast, all you performers. Trails to you until, until we meet again. again. Oh, happy trails! Look at us, a little happy trails group. And my dear, yes, yeah. Uh, well, we have thirty seconds left in the show. Ah. Oh my god! I we want to ask you the, where you're talking Beautiful. about with with the uh, with a, a susic, I want to say spoofical. I know. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you see yourself on this SNL stage one day? Oh, gosh. I don't know about that, but I definitely um, would like to write my own show one day, my own comedy 
a piano show. Yeah, um, that's never been done before. It, w- a well, Netflix one. Honestly, there is no female doing parodies. I know no. uh, Weird Al does it. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's no female yeah. doing yeah. musical parodies, and that's kind of my thing right now because of dueling pianos. Yeah. And I've gotten really into. I, I've done a little stand up comedy, and even then, I I do some of my own original. Yeah comedy songs um if you put my freckles together i'm half black uh it's <laughs> it's not porn it's hbo uh truly and we talked about that at the top of the show we talked yeah, about hbo so, and mtv and i love doing it it's comedy is is what i'm good at so it's out there in the universe now yeah so it's out here, there everyone yes. happy trails to everyone happy this trails. happy thursday Whee! we'll see you uh next friday for the show okay Sorry.